Well, here we are at the uh, Hertfordshire showground. Uh, we're visiting here the uh, tent of Hertfordshire County Council with some of the exhibitions that the children have done. People are enjoying themselves going around the stalls and here's a thing for the kids, banging on drums and so forth. And of course here is the uh, tent for food, microbreweries and so forth. And it wouldn't be a, a show without tractors and big machinery. But the really important thing is the animals. Here are um, some of the larger animals, uh, including Simmentels and Charolais, uh, and then followed uh, by the donkeys uh, in the show ring here, uh, and uh, various other kinds of dressage uh, activities, which go on for quite a part of the show. <coughs> It's interesting to note that uh, there's not just this sort of level of, uh, of animals being uh, shown off in the ring, but we come uh, very shortly to racehorses which have been retired and following a new career, and it's considered to be a particularly important part of uh, the activities of the countryside. Um, I think that's coming up in a moment uh, now. Um, here we are, they'll be cantering around the Round the ring. A very good uh, announcement system explaining what was going on. The building you can see in the distance there is the uh, member's enclosure. But there's the food. And uh, it was a very crowded show, as you can see from this. Uh, various tents going around the food. Bank. But here we have a dray. And the uh, people showing us exactly how they look after the horses. The two horses are quite fond of each other and when they get separate, as you'll see in a minute, they seem to get somewhat upset. Uh, anyway, but Mullen is the, uh, one of the local breweries here, which is a sort of micro brewery that, as you can see, is an award-winning uh, organisation. <coughs> and we take a little while while they demonstrate other uses of these horses uh, for logging in the forests. Uh, and in fact they do have advantages over tractors even now because they can steer between the trees and here he's beginning to show a little exhibition of how that can be done by having traffic codes as the imaginary trees you'll see that in just a second <laughs> Here we go, there's the log. Doesn't look a very big log. But often they very often are very big logs. Now he's taking his cones are the trees and the old uh, loggers or the uh, foresters used to have competitions to weave in and out of the trees without hitting them and this was quite cha this was changed as a competition um, to see if the horses can do it but what I'm going to do I'll go out there to where Jeremy so her horse settles a bit good boys But of course, so it's food, isn't it? And that was a big part of it. But here's a little interesting thing with the count counts for each one has 10,000 cows to give to the World Park projects in their area. And the county fire service helps to train bikers. Apparently, bikers don't seem to like the police very much. It's what county councils do with training standards. And the dogs. Marvellous dogs, all very well behaved. Uh, here's another activity which uh, I think you'll find interesting. What skill in this is called scurry racing. Unfortunately, one ball goes down on nine, so it's five seconds to add as it stands. Clear on ten, just takes about a minute to get around the course. Must be doing between 20 and 40 miles an hour. That was a cheeky one. 
comes through 12 clear and crosses the finishing line. It's a very... So she's a little bit down, but of course, it's all about the accuracy as well as the speed, but one down there. That's five seconds to add at nine. Karen still pushing hard with this lovely pair of ponies. Suited and booted, they really are very smart indeed as they take... That was also interesting, they had the ponies called Gromit and Wallace and Gromit suited and booted. Karen driving so hard, forth. and that's gone down as well, so another 10 seconds to add. 15 in total, goes through 12 and crosses the line now in 66.49 with 15 ah. seconds to add. Texas is Beauty of the Beast this And time. there were several stands, quite a lot of people in them. Back to the baggers and mash. And now big machinery. That's a class combine harvester delivering its grain into the truck. We also look after the countryside and the environment at the same time. Now if you're lucky along the bottom... And we're also about to see a uh, straw wrapping machine. The wrapper working again. Just wrap this one that's kept all over the winter and it's used for some of the there's another one being wrapped and now we have our final event here the tractor towing thing by the girls the boys and the parents Now we've got the sheep shearing chap. This is a uh, New Zealander who goes around all the shows. Uh, he gets his sheep to dance. They don't really dance. You can see the various kinds of sheep. He explains what they are and what they're for. But here he's just about the shearer sheep. It normally takes about 35 seconds, he tells us. But um, of course he's doing a bit more slow than that because he's doing a demonstration. It's amazing the amount of uh, <coughs> wool that comes off a sheep. He does this show three times a day during the course of uh, one of these shows. We've seen this in Suffolk as well as here. Apparently sheep don't have top teeth. They have to mash up the earth, mash up the earth and they have a sort of a very hard gum. It's a bloody teeth, Oh, she's still got her baby teeth. Who's still got their baby teeth? Not many in the back there. Okay, well, now, well, she's a little bit different to you in that she has got any dudes just running the handpiece over the top of the skin. Okay, just like that. She's got a nice bit of it. It's a bit like a vibrator team feeling, yeah. Now, we're going to start on our belly wool or our tummy wool. Now, this is a little bit lower quality. Of course, uh, most of the time, she's been sitting on it. I'm going to take it off there. Okay, but then coming to what I call the bikini line. <coughs> yep. <Ooh. coughs> if you're heading out on holiday soon, today's your chance. 50p. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right, so let me start coming down the leg here. Now, all the time, I'm using my left hand to actually stretch out the skin. Remember, my comb here is flat. The sheep is round and pointed. We want the full length of the wool. So all the time using my left hand to actually stretch out the skin and try to keep the sheep uh, as flat as possible. Just cleaning up over the tail. Of course, the sheep doesn't use toilet paper, so it gets a bit mucky around here. Get it. Oh, how do you like that for a Klingon, kids? <laughs> what a beauty. Now, that's what you get if you don't wipe your bottom properly. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, your mum and dad are here. You're wrapping down the stairs. Oh, nice. Nice. Right, so we'll just tuck that around there. We then start coming up the middle of the sheep. Now, we start from the middle of the sheep because all the dirty bits are underneath the legs. 
they're going to end up on the outside of the piece where it finished. We can take those dirty bits off afters. So it's a bit like when you're doing your shaving, guys. You don't want to cut yourself. So you've got to stretch all those wrinkles out. And we've got to mind those ears. Because uh, all our sheep now are electronically tagged. Uh, it's a bit like when you're doing your shopping these days, okay? You go to the... Uh, uh, um, you put your shopping over the scanner. Well, same with our sheep. Well, I do find it's easy to put the scanner over the sheep rather than the other way around. Uh, but then start coming uh, over the uh, lamb chops here or the long blows. Right the way up that side. We're working our way down the other side now. We're well over halfway there. Just coming down on that last side now. And now the clock. And even the audience watched it and enjoyed it the same and all the 